Hello everybody, I am the investigator and welcome back to Angels with Scaly Wings. So this episode is going to be a bit longer. Um, I'm still not sure how far from the end I am, but I'm probably going to start doing um, probably around hour long videos for the series until we get to the ending because I want to get more done in these in these episodes um, than just you know meeting with a person and then and then ending the episode there. So probably this episode is going to be about an hour long, give or take. Um, and I think we said we'd meet with Lorem again today, or did I don't think I, I don't think I actually chose. Um, I'm enjoying the time with Lorem, so I'm and maybe Ipsum too. So I'm going to go see Ping Pong. I guess we're not going out. Lorem's coming here. Hey Lorem. Hey traveler. So what exactly are we going to? So where exactly are we going? You mentioned something about treasure hunting. Is it raining? But don't tell. But don't tell me we're actually trying to unearth some ancient human artifacts. Don't worry, this is going to be fun. I'll just hope for the best. I'm not sure who came up with it, but someone gave this kit to me as a present a few months ago. He showed me the map. It was a piece of paper that had obviously been treated to look much older than it really was. Sure, let's go. I'm glad you agree. I'm not sure if it can be of much assistance, though. I don't exactly know how much about the area. But you're big and so... No. No. I'm not. Or at least you're bigger and stronger than I am. No. No, I'm not. You are a dragon. I am a fleshy human. Fleshy human. You are much stronger than I am. I might be taller than you, sure, but I highly doubt I am stronger than you. You can do the digging. Great. Besides, I've wanted to do this for a while now, and Ipsum is always busy, so I figured this would be a, as good a time as any. Do you need to bring a shovel, or do you expect me to dig with my bare hands? Well, the instructions say we only need this map and a pen. I've got a pen. Not on my desk currently, but I, I have multiple pens. Great, then we're all set. So, where are we supposed to go? If this is the facility, then the place is, then the place indicated is the school, or rather, somewhere between the school and the administrative building. Let's go then. Interesting, interesting. Here we are. The X on the map is right between these two buildings, so it must be around here somewhere. Can we just dig our in, uh, on school property, though? Like, I'm pretty sure they would frown upon this. Back to school, huh? Not quite yet. Everyone's on summer break right now. Which is a good thing, because you really wouldn't want to get swarmed by all the children. They would go crazy if they saw you. Pretty sure the administrators would go crazy if they saw me as well. Digging. How does school work here, anyway? Are you talking about this one or schools in general? In general, I'd like to know more about how your school system works as a whole. I see. You won't let a learning opportunity to go by. I'm just doing my job. You should start looking for that treasure then. Sure. While I looked for hints as to the treasure's whereabouts, Lorem started talking. Right, we do have the we do have quite the education system. Different schools and districts run on their own, so when looking at details, things can vary a lot. However, there are a few things that are true no matter which region you are in. Compulsory education lasts for about 10 years. There are a lot of options for schools and school systems. Choice is an important factor here. We recognize that there isn't one system that works best for everyone, 
so there are many options depending on what path you want to take. It doesn't sound too different from what I from what it used to be like in my world, but nowadays things are a bit more chaotic. Practical skills are valued most in our city, and you aren't really given a choice to do anything else. Sure, people can learn other things on their own, but it's not as if school is mandatory anymore. People just do whatever they feel like. Huh. Did you grow up like that too? No, I still got to experience our old education system, college included. Hmm. What was your favorite subject? Definitely not. Definitely not math. Definitely not math. Um, art. Really? Me too. I always like trying, I always like trying out different mediums. I tried sculpting again recently. What for? Art doesn't need a justification. But anyway, it helps me visualize what the characters in my game should look like. Can't you do that with a computer? Sure, but working with a physical medium makes things easier for me. Instead of working with an interface, there's only my hands and a lump of clay. No technological gadgets required. I see. Did you find anything yet? I sure haven't. No, I feel like we must be missing something. Maybe, but the map, maybe, but the map clearly marked this place. You can see it for yourself. Yeah, the X definitely points to this valley. Alley. It must be here somewhere. Look inside the windows, investigate the water trough, examine the walls. That's what's like there. Maybe there's something to do with the water trough and the faucets. Maybe. Let's check it out. We walked over and looked inside the water trough. Inside, the dirt was already a few inches high, a clear indicator that hadn't been cleaned for a while. I guess the janitor's on summer break too. Or maybe they left it here on purpose because the treasure's inside? It's all dried up though, way too hard to start digging. Maybe, but that's what the faucets are for. If you say so. We turned on the faucets and watched as the trough slowly filled with water. That should be enough. And now? We start digging. Come on, what kind of treasure hunters would we be if we didn't get our hands dirty? I immerse my hands in the sludge. This is still pretty hard. Let's turn on the water again then. Norm joined me, both of us digging around in the slides which slowly became clearer as more water filled the trough. Hey, I think I've got something. Really? Yeah, I think it's stuck to the bottom. Norm's face was straining as he tried to pull harder and harder on the object he had found. Maybe I should try? I think I got it. Suddenly his hands reappeared from beneath the murky water, holding a small shiny object in their grasp. There it is. What is it? He opened his hands to reveal a big screw. Oh. Maybe you should put that back. Yeah, maybe. By now the world had become clear enough that we could see where the screw originally was. After Lorem replaced it, we noticed that, beside the water, the trough was completely empty. I guess it's not here after all. But at least the janitor would be grateful for the cleaning. Maybe. Look inside though. Maybe it's something to do with the windows. I think so? It's as good a guess as any. I suppose. You can fly, right? Sure. Okay, you check out the windows on the left. You should get a better view inside if you fly up to them. All right. As Lorne flew up to the windowsill with the flew flaps of his wings, I turned to the right and looked inside the windows of the administrative building. The curtains were closed, but through a small gap I could barely see inside. I got closer and closer, hoping to get a better view when my forehead bumped into the glass with a, dirt, with a dull thud. I heard some movement behind the curtains. Suddenly they were drawn open to reveal a black dragoness who looked down on me with disapproval. In an instant, her expression changed to one of shock and surprise. Before anything else could happen, I quickly stepped away, stepped away from the window and outside her view. 
Just empty classrooms on my side. Did you find anything? Nothing. Examine the walls. Maybe it has something to do with the walls. What makes you think so? You're clearly missing something here, so maybe there is some sort of hint we've been overlooking. Something that wouldn't be obvious to anyone who came through here. I have no idea what you're talking about. These walls don't really look special to me. My gaze slowly went along the walls, trying to find something, and something, anything that could have hidden a mean, have a hidden meaning. Hey, look at that! What do you mean? That kind of looks like an X on the wall, don't you think? I guess so. Are you talking about these things over here? Maybe, maybe it's here somewhere. Look there! Lorem crouched down and stuck his hand in an indentation that ran along the wall near the ground. Aha! What is it? He pulled out a cylindrical, shiny object and held it up to me. It looks like some sort of capsule. Maybe there's something inside. That's going to be a pretty small treasure. He screwed it open and held the two halves of the cylindrical object in his hands. To our surprise, it didn't have any empty space on the inside. Nothing could be hidden within. Instead, the inside of the two halves were engraved. What does it say? 2J. That's it? Yep, it's also on the other half. It might be coordinates. The grid on the map had numbers and letters like that. That means 2J would be here. Right in the middle of a forest. Let's go. Finding a spot might be a bit more difficult from here on out. Why is that? We don't really have buildings and addresses as reference anymore. Here we only have a spot in the middle of the forest. Don't worry, I have an excellent sense of navigation. Let's hope we find it before it gets too dark though, or things might become a lot more complicated. I'd rather not get lost here. You don't have to worry about anything. If there are any predators in the air, they'll see me as a bigger, as a better target than you. Don't tell me there are predators in these woods. Not really. There might be a stray or two, but that should be it. These woods are considered to be very safe. Even if that's true, if worst comes to worst, you can just fly away. I guess that's true. You kind of sound like you don't like the woods, though. I like going for walks as long as it's safe. Then you don't have anything to worry about here. I already told you there shouldn't be any, there shouldn't really be any predators in these parts. And it's not like these woods are haunted or anything. Haunted? That reminds me of something. What is it? Maybe you'll be interested in this. In our world, there's a forest that was notorious for the many suicides that took place there. Yeah, in Japan. It was said to be haunted by angry spirits. I can't remember what it's called. It's a, it's a forest in Japan. I think they call it the Suicide Forest. That sounds horrible. But why are there so many suicides there? And why are the spirits so angry? Well, in Japanese folklore, yes, yeah, see Japanese, people have a soul or a spirit that is called Eiko. Upon a person's death, the Eiko separates from the body and goes to a form of purgatory. After certain rites have been performed, the Reikon then goes to Antigone's ancestors and becomes a protector of the living family. However, under certain circumstances, like the rites not being performed correctly or dying in a sudden or violent manner, the Reikon transforms into Yurei instead. The Yurei can return to the physical world and it haunts until and it haunts it until it has been laid to rest. So there you go, another myth for your collection. But I know where not to go for my next vacation now. I wouldn't want to visit either. That makes two of us. What do you think about stuff like that? Paranormal stuff? You know, until a few weeks ago, humans were still just a myth. It's already been a few weeks. 
And if you look at that portal, it's like... Sorry. And if we look at the portal, it's like something that came out of science fiction. Ibsen certainly seemed interested in it. He is. He actually read up on some new theories about it. Like what? You remember him telling you about the different branches and how the barrier separates them, right? Yeah? So since the barrier is made up of wormholes, and using the portal displaces them, it leaves gaps in the barrier. I distinctly remember him talking about something like this. Through these gaps, he thinks we can communicate with our alternate selves in the other timelines. Yes, how does that work? It all goes into the nature of existence itself. Who are you as a person? Do you think you are just the traveler from this branch? What about the ones from all the other timelines who have made other decisions? Would you consider yourself to be the same person as them? The only difference between you and the traveler from another branch may be that you decided to skip breakfast this morning. Maybe you are all of them. How is that possible? Like a seed from which many roots can sprout, or a tree and its branches, there may be a uniting factor that branched off into these different timelines. Your fundamental nature. You might call it a soul or something similar, but the idea is that even though there are many different versions of you, there is an aspect that unites all of you. A part of myself that stands over me, kind of like a super ego. An interesting comparison. If we use a similar model here, then we can say that you are almost made up of three distinct parts. In each timeline, you have a physical body which is driven by its own base desires that it seeks to fulfill. All physical needs like hunger, thirst, and even breathing fall under this category. However, as a being with free will, you are also capable of making your own decisions. That includes being able to act contrary to what your body is telling you. This ability to think and make decisions on your own is your rational mind, the self. And lastly, there's the third part I just talked about, the one that stands above all of you and unites you in some way. Let's call this your higher self. Through this higher self, you may be able to communicate with your alternate selves in some way. Usually, the barrier would prevent, would prevent this, but through the gaps, communication becomes a possibility. The more gaps there are, the easier it should, this should be. And how would I go about doing this? I suppose that would be the job of the higher self. So I can't control it. These are all just theories. We, re we wouldn't really know until it happened. Only then can we study it. If it was to happen, how would I know? If someone else's experience gets relayed through this connection to you, it could manifest in a number of ways. Maybe it could be something like a deja vu or a false memory maybe even dreams. But the biggest difficulty would be to recognize that this phenomenon is happening in the first place. It's certainly quite out there, you have to admit. Sure, but quantum mechanics are already complicated enough. Once you look at what lies beyond, it's just crazy territory. What do you think about all this? I think it might already be happening. Really? Just think about it. If the possibility of it ever happening is there, then it's more than likely that it already has. I'm not sure if I, I kind of follow. Let us assume that this is an average timeline. The pros have been found by both our people, contact has been made, and now you and Razor are both here for a visit. A few letters were exchanged before you and Razor were sent here, so that means the pro has already been used a few times. Using a portal once might only have an infinitely small effect on the barrier, like poking a hole in a castle wall with a needle. However, if you multiply this by a nearly infinite number of possible timelines in which these same events have happened, the effects must already be noticeable. That makes sense. Of course, some people may be more susceptible to this than others. Do you think you've already experienced it? I don't know. I've been having some weird dreams lately. 
I mean, I have two, honestly, if I remember correctly. Really? We were just entering a clearing, and from my view, I could see some outlines that had been drawn on the ground. And I think this is the spot. Why do you think so? Well, the giant X on the ground kind of gets it away. Lerum took flight with a few flaps of his wings. After looking at the scenery from above, he returned to me. You're right. It does look like a giant X. Guess it's time to get our hands dirty again. That may not be necessary this time. What are you talking about? He went to the center where the lions crossed and picked up an object that was lodged top right into the ground. He returned to me once more, holding another capsule similar to the one we had found near the school. Well, that was easy. If we have to go back to town after walking all this way, I'll... And it's open. Apparently, we're going to 6K now. And where is that? There is an abandoned store on the other side of this forest. That's where we are going. That just means that just means the way back is going to be even longer. Ooh. This must have been a candy store or something. Maybe, I don't know. It looks really, really anime-ish. It seems like something you'd find like, out of an anime. Are you sh are you sure we should even be here? This is the place indicated by the map. I was talking about the building being roped off. Maybe it's just part of the game. Is the flooding part of the game too? Oh, oh, I didn't notice that was water. Hey, you can give up if you want to. I certainly won't. Now are you going to help me or not? I guess. I just didn't expect that I'd have to get wet for this. All part of being a treasure hunter. You must not have seen Laura Croft or, or Indiana Jones or the librarians. Yes, pretty sure librarians is the name of that movie. Let's just look for the X. Sure. The one flew up to the light fixtures to get a view from above where I checked out the shelves. I remember when we could still shop here. What happened? Apparently, the area has a problem with flooding. I can see that. So much work and resources are needed to erect a building like this one. And in the end, it just gets abandoned. We have plenty of em empty buildings where I come from. Oh, really? I'm not sure this is a good reminder of home, though. At least you don't have a problem with flooding. Yet. I nearly got sent back, by the way. Really? Why? Political reasons, or I don't think I'm supposed to talk about it. You just did. Is it related to the announcement they made about Reza? Maybe. Huh. Guess things are pretty serious. They are. Have you found anything yet? Not really. Maybe it's underwater. You think so? It's only not anywhere near the ceiling. I already checked there. And I found nothing near the walls or the shelves. It could be hidden beneath a floor tile or something like that. I suppose you're right. Let's do it. Alright. Let's go. Without hesitation, Lauren vanished beneath the water's surface. I wait. I breathe in I breathe in deeply, crouched and began looking under the underwater as well. How high is the water? I looked around, but nothing seemed ordered out of the or out of the ordinary to me. Just as I was about to resurface and get some air, I heard a splash, accompanied by a loud thud. What was that? Lauren? Everything was quiet as I looked around for my companion. Suddenly I heard frantic knocks coming from a shelf that was lying on the ground, half submerged in the water. I realized that it was still standing. I realized that it was still standing when we came in earlier. As I read over to her son, it soon became clear that the locks were coming from beneath. Lauren? Quickly, I mustered all my strength and grabbed the shelf, lifting it 
up until it fell over to the other side with a loud splash. Lauren resurfaced, gasping for breath. That proves that he can't breathe underwater. What just happened? I was looking underwater and suddenly the shark just came down on top of me. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. My leg hurts a bit, but that's about it. But I totally saw something. Let me show you. Without waiting for a reply, Lauren dove down into the water again. Resurfing Singh just a few seconds later, holding an ominous metal box that had a large X on it. This should be it. Let's hope it's waterproof though. From the looks of it, it is. We should go outside though. It'll be hard to read anything in here. Sure. Well, what's inside? No one held out the box to me. It took, I took one of the sheets of paper that were inside and started reading. I think these are pizza vouchers. Lauren was holding another sheet which he started reading aloud. Congratulations, you have solved Pantoli's Pizza's annual treasure hunt. Remember the code word enclosed for an instant rebate on your next order and a chance for the grand prize. You could be the lucky winner for this year's supply of Pantoli's Pizza. This competition will run until... Oh, what is it? It's, it's expired. The treasure hunt, the contest, apparently it all ended months ago. Can we still get the pizza? Well, I don't think that offer is still valid. I mean, we could still get pizza regardless. This whole thing has made me really hungry. I suppose this concludes our treasure hunt. What do we do now? Maybe we can see this experience as another reminder that the journey is its own reward. Or that the early bird gets the worm. You really want some pizza, don't you? That makes me wonder though, why didn't they get rid of the hints and this box when the contest expired? They must have realized that people may still have these kits at home, even when the contest is over. If people were not looking for a hint in the woods and it wasn't there anymore, they might look for hours until they decide there's nothing to find. Or they just didn't care. You know, I'm sorry you're starting to lose hope in Pantoli's Pizza. Seeing us here is really negligent. Who knows what would have happened to you if I wasn't here. Maybe this whole, bu whole building could crash down on the next unlucky people who end up here. Maybe that's why it's ripped off in the first place. But you thought it was part of the game. Maybe they shouldn't, should have put up a sign or something. While I was talking, Lauren walked towards one of the wooden poles that was used to rip off the building. He picked up a large rectangular object from the ground that was hidden in the grass. It was a wooden sign. Warning, do not proceed past this point. The treasure hunt has concluded and there is nothing more to find. Danger ahead. Oh. We could find the treasure, but not this huge sign. What does that say about us? I'm not sure exactly. We should probably head back before it gets too dark, though. We still have to go through the woods again. Alright, let's go. That's how that is. Do you want to pick up some pizza on the way home? I don't know. That's hilarious. Conflict. Chapter 5. Conflict, and it's... And it's fucking Maverick. So, um... I didn't pay much attention. I thought that these were just the names of the chapters. But these are actually... After the last chapter, I'm realizing that these are actual tarot card readings for what's to come in the chapter. So, conflict and its maverick on the actual card, which means... Yay. Which reminds me, Maverick didn't say anything about, or Maverick hasn't said anything to me about the chief having died, about Bryce having been blown up. So, is this when that, his, his feelings about that come bailing towards me like a freight train? After a night of turbulent dreams, my consciousness returned to the shores of the waking world. Uh, nice, uh, nice illusion there. Today is the day of the big fireworks. Who shall I bring? 
girl, girl alone. Alone? What, I can't bring anybody? Well, that fucking sucks. When I was sure any of those I knew would agree to Russell words with me if I asked, I ultimately decided to go alone. Not wanting to impose on anyone if they hadn't asked me first. Is it just... Did... <laughs> Guess. After making some prepar preparations for the day, I set out to experience those fireworks I had heard so much about. Turn my phone, just real quick. When I left my apartment, I realized just how eerily desert... I realized how, just how eerily deserted the rest of the place felt. They really weren't kidding when they said everyone would watch the fireworks. I imagine there were a couple of designated places people gathered for this purpose. I had no doubt they were crowded beyond belief. While I waited for the fireworks to start, I looked at the area around me. With no soul in sight, I realized I hadn't actually spent many nights outside, and was reminded of the day I had arrived here in my apartment in total darkness, with only Remy by my side. Soon the total stillness was broken by the sound of the first rocket ascending, its explosion painting a circular pattern in the sky. More rockets followed, their quantity and frequency steadily increasing. Nice. As the explosions battered my ears, a terrible realization hit me. Considering how public of an event this was, and how everyone would be watching the fireworks, now would be the best time for Razor to make his move. Not only was the village basically deserted, but the sounds of the fireworks would have would also overshadow any gunshots, giving him as much security as he would ever have. That's a good point. As the portal had been repaired by the administrator, Razor would have no trouble making his getaway, and I was the only one who knew. I ran to my apartment and briefly considered calling the police as I grabbed a few things. However, as soon as I remembered, however, I soon remembered that they were not only already understaffed, but I might waste precious time if I tried to do so. I arrived at the port just a few minutes later. I couldn't help but be glad that it was still turned off and didn't appear to have been used recently. For a minute, Razor was still here somewhere. I looked around, thinking about where he could be or if it was worth waiting for him here when I saw something at the corner of my eye. Hesitating, I drew nearer. No! I'm so sick. I checked Sebastian for any signs of life and found nothing. However, his body was still warm. Razor was here very recently, but he hadn't used the portal just yet. Why? <clears throat> Sebastian's guard post was not was not just for the portal itself, but also the surrounding area. Since Razor was already here, he probably had some unfinished business very close by. The underground building. The administrator told me about had told me about all about the prowess of the generators within. It probably hadn't been hard for Razor to guess the same, or to try steering them from a place he knew would be even more deserted than the rest of the village is right now. He also didn't have to go far from the portal. All things considered, it was the only option that made sense to me. I could have waited for Razor here, but in the end I decided it would be better to meet him underground. If there was going to be a confrontation, I was sure I would have the advantage in a more crowded space. Even in the darkness, it was easy for me to spot the site where they had unearthed the building's entry, as it was in a roped off area. That had been that I had seen from afar before. Kill Sebastian. 
remained to the building, I was met by a long, illuminated hallway that was lined with doors on both sides. Since the lights were already on, Razor had to be very close. I wasn't surprised that the building still having electricity since its generators were also powering the portal. <clears throat> Suddenly one of the doors opened and out came Razor, carrying a large cardboard box. When he spotted me, he set it on the ground. Traveler, you're here! You don't know how glad I am to see you. I've wanted to talk with you for so long. I even tried to contact you, but I couldn't with someone tailing you the whole time. But talking can wait. Now that you're here, we've got everything. Come on, help me with this. I just gotta go. Give me the option to punch him in the face. Give me the option to punch him square in the face. No. No. What are you talking about? I'm not doing anything until you answer a few questions. Do you want to talk now? Sure, why not? You've probably got a few odds if you wanted to. None of them will serve us here. We didn't even get the backup generator as well after we sent this one over. When did you realize we were in the past? How did you know about the comet? I've known for a while. It's what I wanted to talk with you about when we met at the portal. How about you? I only recently found out. Looking back, it just seems so obvious to me now. I'm not sure exactly... I'm not sure how exactly you figured it out. But there are so many damn clues when you think about it. I mean, how could a supposedly completely different independent civilization speak the same language as us? What was this supposed to be, an alternate reality? No, it's just a different time. When was there ever anything resembling these creatures on Earth? It's not hard to make the jump from dragons to dinosaurs when some of them here look pretty damn near identical to, di di to dinosaurs we knew about. And then, there are also the prehistoric fruits, the plants and the fact that their technology level is nearly exactly the same as our own past society. But we don't even have to think that abstract. You just need to look at the sky. The sun, the moon, even the stars are the same. Constellations change over time, of course, but you know we could but you know we could account for that stuff. You could have just pointed your PD at the sky and we would have told you the time period, including the imminent threat of being eradicated. You could even see the meteorite in the sky, and how it could change its position day after day. Are you done being condescending? I guess so. You killed those dragons, Razor. What a brilliant deduction, Sherlock. Why did you do it? Do you really need me to spell it out? I thought better of you. After I found out the truth about this place, I knew just waiting for the generators we were owed was not an option anymore. It would have taken who knows how long, but I didn't intend to stay a day longer than necessary. You wouldn't believe how hard it was for me to acquire some generators. Some of these, the dragons didn't go down easily. But who cares? that they got back the generators I stole. With this one, we won't need any of the others. How could you do this? How could I do this? Let me ask you this. What harm is there really in taking the generators when the whole civilization will be gone in a few weeks anyway? The ones I killed just died a little earlier than scheduled. Even if that creep hadn't shown up and interrupted our meeting, we wouldn't have had the time for them to make the generators for us. How about we don't let them all die? They aren't going to be extinct anytime soon, if that's what you're concerned about. I paid the Hatcher another visit before I came here. With the right persuasion, I think we'll have plenty of reasons to keep at least some of them around. Bodyguards, border patrols, weapons, even as pets or companions, as long as we make the necessary changes. See, it's not a bad idea as you might think. I'm not just going to abandon them like that only for the whole civilization to be wiped out. Get your priorities straight, Traveler. Next you'd rather starve because you suddenly empathize with the stake and you're not satisfied just starving by yourself. No, you're going to let all of us starve because you want to impose your morals on everyone. Since when do you think you get to have any say in this? You know you're, why you're here. What, what you're proposing is treason and you know the consequences. Personally, I don't mind if you want to stay here. You know I don't care about corporal punishment. Just let me through, and you can do whatever you wish. I can't do that, Razor. As here it is. 
They've told you they need this generator to stop the comet, huh? And now you've become their lackey. Don't tell me you've been drinking up what they've been telling you. You know they have as much of a, as much of a vested interest in this whole thing as humanity does. That I and you do, or at least used to. Do you think they wouldn't do the same thing if it was their families on the line instead of ours? Their entire world is on the line here. They live in perfect harmony with their perfect green energy source and no reason for wars or conflicts, yada yada yada. We had that too. And you know what happened then? Of course you do. This is such an idiotic trope, you know. Random person meets weird natives, learns their ways, and then ends up saving them. What do they need you for, huh? Maybe they're going to be extinct for a reason if they can't save them and save themselves. You know about suffering, yet we'll, yet we'll let them have it? I don't care what happens to them, but unlike you, I was at least trying to save humanity at any cost. We have the solution right here, and you want to get philosophical now? Don't you think we deserve it? They've had it for who knows how long. Now it's time for us. Not like this. Do you think I like it? If there was a different way, I would have spent the last few weeks doing what you didn't. We don't live in this fairy tale world of yours where there's a perfect solution to everything. You should know that. Just being here for a few weeks must have messed you up. I think I know why. You got too used to all the comforts they have here. You actually don't care if they all die back home, do you? As long as you can stay here, in this perfect little world of yours, you have discarded everything and everyone back home and replaced it with this. Maybe it's because you don't have a life back home. I can even understand that a little. Of course, it would be nice to just stay here where they have everything that we don't. But being here also reminded me of everything I hated about our world as it used to be. The pettiness and the politics. Say about the solar flare what you want, but it leveled the playing field and gave people like us a chance to make a difference. For all of our efforts, what did we get? A vote that was meaningless in a sea of stupidity and lies. Not everyone has to pull their own weight. We make the rules. You, of all people, should understand. Of course they wouldn't. They haven't experienced how it is to live like we do now. To see the world burn and everyone you know die around you. And because I have, I won't let the same thing happen to them. How many do you think died back home just in the two weeks we've been here because we don't have power for the hospital, huh? Do you think those victims aren't worth mentioning? Or do you just care about the few dragons I killed? Our city is the last bastion of a civilized society in a world where nothing else is left. Maybe you've forgotten about them, but I haven't. How many of us do you think will still be there in a month? A year? Or are they just a statistic to you? The same can be said for the dragons. What do you want me to do? Talk me down from doing this? What do you want to do? Talk me down from doing this? And then what? It's too late anyway. You think they're just going to let us go after what I've done? Fat chance. Whatever you may think, you'll find that our leaders back home agree with my course of action. Why are you telling me this? Because I expect you to join me. That's not going to happen. And you call yourself an ambassador? This generator is the only thing we need for our city to survive. How can you even argue about this? The dragons also need that generator and I'll do what is necessary to stop you if I have to. So that makes you judge, jury, and executioner. What a wonderful set of morals you have there, Traveler. We only need to wait until the comet has passed safely. You think you can stop the comet? And you need this generator to do that? Sure, if your and if your plan fails, then not only is this world gone, but we also lose any and all hope to save our own. We are so close now. You can't risk anything by waiting for your crazy plan. When back home, they are, they are dying by the minute. I will not let you. You only want to save your own two-faced hide because you don't want to face the consequences of what you did. <laughs> Why are you laughing about this? Because it's a joke. It must be. I'm the one with the gun and you thought you could just waltz in here and lecture me? Listening to you is fun and all, but the grown-ups must get back to work now. I mean, what are you going to do? You can't stop me anyway. Actually, I can. 
I opened the cloak I was wearing revealed to reveal an improvised bomb I had made from a, from a generator. What is this? You showed me how to do it with the little trap you said at the farmhouse. That wasn't intended for you. It doesn't matter. You said it for someone. You said it to kill. Where'd you even get a generator? After the police reclaimed the, gen the generators you stole, it was easy for me to take one when I was alone in the department, just in case. I set the bomb on the ground between us. With it and me, with it and me, with it and me between Razor and the exit. He would have to listen now. So what's the plan? I'll tell you what's going to happen. You leave the generator and turn yourself in. You know what? I think you're bluffing. If you set off that bomb, not only do we both die, but you destroy the generators as well. And with them, any chance of saving either world. You would never do that. He pulled out his gun and pointed at me as he slowly started closing distance between us. What's it going to be, Traveler? Killing all of us or just this world? Razor was right. In reality, the bomb provided no leverage against him. If his goal was truly to save us back home at any cost, he would not turn himself in, even if the threat of setting off the bomb was a real one. His best chance would be to at least try to kill me now. I turned around and started running. No! I heard gunshots and immediately I felt the most excruciating pain I ever experienced resonate through my arm. As I kept sprinting as fast as I could, I heard a beeping sound that made me realize I inadvertently activated the bomb when I was hit. Out of bullets, Razor's not far behind me as he both scrambled towards the exit. Just as I reached the outside, the bomb went off. The explosion battered my ears as, shockwave, as the shockwave sent me flying. I collided with the ground and immediately felt a hail of debris. I cowered, waiting for it to die down. After a few seconds, I turned around and looked at the sky with the fireworks still painted patterns in the stars. With one hand, I reached toward my injured arm only to find it wet with blood from the bullet wound. My whole body was numb, but I could not give up now. I slowly got up, looking around the area to get some perspective of the situation. Not far from where I was, I saw Razor laying on the ground. He wasn't moving. As I got close, I spotted the gun next to him. I won't let them find this. I took it with me, hiding it in one of my pockets as I started making my way towards the portal with slow and easy steps. I was shaking, my vision and my vision was blurry. Every inch of movement felt like a new and harder chore than the last. Eventually my legs gave in and I collapsed to the ground. I resigned to my fate as I watched the night sky illuminated by the colorful explosions of the fireworks. Suddenly I was lifted off the ground and as I opened my eyes I saw the masked face of the administrator. I just could not let it happen. I had to stop him. I had to try. Somehow. The administrator started moving, carrying me. Unfortunately, it seems like the generators were destroyed as well. So this is how it ends. With humanity, with humanity deemed to fade into history and the dragons facing extinction. All hope is not lost. It never was. What are you going to do? I'm going to send you back in time. We'll just try again. And maybe we'll do better next time. Do what now? By now, we had arrived at the portal. The administrator gently sat me down before moving towards the portal's controls. You will probably forget most of what happened. The teleportation tends to do that sometimes. Especially when someone is transported several times in quick succession. Maybe you'll remember a thing or two. And maybe they'll help you do better next time. Maybe. I'll see you on the other side. I heard the sound of the portal starting to do its work as the number, numbness and pain suddenly left my body. Things I had experienced and things I hadn't flashed across my mind as I was teleported. I felt free. Oh!
Well, I didn't expect that. I didn't know the end was gonna be. I didn't know the end was gonna be this episode. I was like, I don't know how far I am from the end. I'm gonna make this episode extra long to, to just to get a bit closer. And the end was this episode. But so so this ending, I just get sent back in time. Which is basically, I start a new game. Okay, well, I'm definitely going to play through this again, but on my own time, more than likely. Excuse me. Um... I don't know if I'm going to record another playthrough with different with different um, choices. Probably not. But I am definitely going to play this again and try and get a different ending. Try, and I know that this game has a lot of different endings. So I realized recently that for all of the previous episodes I did not put a link in the description so that you can find this game uh, as well. I think it was like either $4.99 or $9.99 on Steam. But this has been a really good experience. System, you have seen the neutral ending. Destination, this was the neutral ending? Huh. You experience just one of the many different endings of Angels with Scary Wings. In order to see the story's conclusion, you would have to play through the game a number of times. During the next playthrough, you may want to make different choices. You may even find the information you gained this time to be helpful. Sometimes you might even notice that prior choices have changed the character or aspect of the game's world permanently. Like, 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 uh, Tatsuharu moving or Katsuhara moving his uh, his card is that something that's permanent at any rate feel free to employ the game's skip buttons control and tab generously as by default they're only skip text that you have already seen making subsequent playthroughs much more palatable so like Neko Jishi can you find all the different endings you have seen your first ending it begins So, that's crazy. Oh, oh, that's so cute. That looks so good. <laughs> So, just like with Neko Jishi, you can skip any text that you have already seen. Um, that gun wasn't there before. Pretty sure that gun wasn't there before. That is so cool. Okay, well, um, I'm going to make sure I get the link to this game put in the description below. I'm definitely going to play this game and get more, get, try and get the, the good ending and the bad ending. Um, but thank you all so much for watching. This has been an amazing experience. I love this game. I really love these, these uh, visual novel type games. And... I definitely want to find more. If you know of more that if they're like Neko Jishi or Angels with Scary Wings, please by all means like leave a comment in the description below. Then leave a comment in the box below and tell me about them. I definitely want to play more of these, these visual novel type games. These are amazing.
Mikojishi was actually the first one I played before I played this one. So, thank you all so much for watching. If you liked it, give that like button some love, maybe the subscribe button too, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.